So clearly turning to the internet may not be the panacea that many patients think it is. There is a definite gap here in terms of how to educate patients and provide important advice. And that gap can be filled by the excellent work of Euphoria. Well, to tell us more is Mrs. Elizabeth Van Steyen, who is Scientific Communications and Advocacy Manager at Euphoria. Very good to see you, Elizabeth. Well, clearly uh, the internet isn't the only answer. So tell me, how does Euphoria try and fill the gap in education for patients suffering from respiratory allergies? Thank you, David. And that's certainly what we're seeing. So while it's wonderful that patients are becoming more empowered to play an active role in their health care plan, it's important for both patients and providers to understand that the internet is a very powerful tool and the information that's available on disease management, whether for allergic rhinitis or any other disease for that matter, is not always going to be helpful or accurate. So the fact that anyone can create content and provide misleading or unfounded medical advice uh, is something that we're always faced with. So at Euphoria, we aim to listen to real concerns of real patients so that we can provide them with evidence-based and expert-led resources that will help them to either seek appropriate care or to improve the effectiveness of the treatment that they're already undergoing. So with allergic rhinitis, for example, we have detailed videos available for patients on the Euphoria website and YouTube channel about how to correctly use a nasal spray and how to properly rinse the nose with saline. So I think many patients who have used, uh, who have used nasal sprays for many years may be surprised to learn that they may have been using them incorrectly all this time. And this can potentially be a source of improvement in the management of their symptoms. Uh, um, that's absolutely fascinating and clearly you're doing all the right things, but what's the outreach like? Uh, and tell me, what's the awareness of euphoria like amongst patients? So I think euphoria, we engage with patients in a few different ways. Um, and the, the awareness of euphoria among patients is improving each year. So we have a patient advisory board, which was launched in 2017. And this was really, an, the aim of the patient advisory board was really to create a network for patients uh, to share the physical, the emotional, and even the financial impact of their disease and its effect on their quality of life, because we, all, we all define that in different ways. So the Euphoria Patient Advisory Board, we meet virtually around four times each year, and it's an opportunity for patients to really discuss their unmet needs and their suggestions for improvements in care, and to suggest how to raise, level, uh, raise awareness at the political level as well. So these meetings have gathered some incredible insights that have really delivered real impact to the patient community. So we've had the launch of the Global CRS with MP Awareness Day, uh, in which we'll continue in second edition this April. And we've also had two patient-led publications uh, in the last year, which uh, have suggestions for patients living with type 2 inflammation. And these are actively incorporated into Eucoria educational initiatives for healthcare providers. Um, additionally, patients are also regularly represented here in Euphoria News, as well as the Innovation Board debates alongside our network of medical experts. So going forward, tell me what are Euphoria's ambitions? I mean, clearly this is about improving knowledge, empowering patients to achieve better disease control. Indeed. So we have some exciting initiatives on our agenda for 2023, and we're really looking forward to expanding our patient portfolio to include even more patient education materials, not only for patients themselves, but also for caregivers. And this includes the expansion of our patient advisory board. So any patients with allergic rhinitis or hay fever, as many people would say, uh, asthma, chronic rhinosinusitis with or without nasal polyps, or any combination of those conditions are encouraged to participate. And we'll include a link uh, below for anyone interested in joining uh, to see how they can get in touch with us to get involved. Well, fantastic to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Elizabeth Van Steyn. Thank you, David.